Hi everyone, this post is a shout out for Adam Grant, whom I absolutely love. He's an organizational psychologist and he has written books like The Originals, How Nonconformists Move the World. Um, this came out a while ago, but uh, ever since I've started reading his work, I am a huge fan. And today he's talking about the best way to open people's minds isn't to argue with them, it is to listen to them. So this is Charisma 101, right? If you want to connect with somebody deeply, if you yourself want to be felt understood, the most important thing that we should be doing is put our listening ears on. And that is what we teach in preschool, right? First thing to be an effective communicator is to listen intently before you start formulating your answers. And here he talks about something. When people feel understood, they become less defensive and more reflective and develop less extreme, more nuanced views. Okay, so let us look at what he's trying to say. Listening to understand. But what do we do? We usually listen quickly to only formulate our reply and quickly respond. But what he's urging us to do is in order to have deep, meaningful conversations so that you can have some concrete views, so that you can establish some concrete views about any topic, you need to listen to understand. He's citing a paper here. Disagreements can polarize attitudes when they evoke defensiveness. So right off the bat, if you're starting to question the other person's intent, you are, you're not even giving him or her a chance to complete their train of thought, right? And in the process, you are actually making them more defensive because they want to somehow put that point across and you're not allowing them to do that. So that is what he's saying. Listen to understand first. And how does he do that? He shows a very nice diagram here by Liz Foslian. And what she says is, what is helpful, what is not helpful. If you are saying things like, what's wrong with you? Why do you think that? Hey, you're becoming too hysterical. Just stop being emotional. Just get to the facts or something. You know, you're just putting judgment one on top of the other. And that is going to instigate the other person to get even more defensive and more emotional about the topic that they want to so deeply discuss. Right? But what are the helpful things? How do you see the situation? Can you explain to me your viewpoint? Hey, let's take a break and regroup once again to brainstorm. How can we compromise? Is there a middle ground that we can come to? I get that. Just, you know, trying to put yourself in the other person's shoes. So these are the things to say during an argument. So this, once again, is a shout out to Adam Grant. Please follow his work. He's an organizational psychologist and he talks about psychology in a way that can fetch us great rewards and elevate our potential to the next level. So let us talk about this. So we have been talking about the importance of verbal, non-verbal communication in the digital age because our, uh, you know, our language is becoming so linear. We don't know the other person's intent, especially in the text. Are they smiling? Unless there is an emoji, even words like RIP with a sad emoji, right? Rest in peace, sad emoji. Without the sad emoji, you're... You, you're even questioning the word, three letters R.I.P. Rest in peace. Uh, it's it's become so bad, right? So linear communication is actually messing up the relationships between people because the full context, the three-dimensional context of emotions, nuances in language, and non-verbal cues are missing on a flat unidimensional text. So please go through these articles and think about how communication is key especially in the digital age, okay? And I talk about how to communicate with children, how to ask open questions, how to negotiate, how to collaborate, you know, how touch is so important for our immunity, okay? Again, uh, schools are seeing a surge in violence. What can be done? Are we communicating with our children, setting expectations about their potential? Are we showcasing to our kids that they mean so much to us, you know? all the elements that are critical for communication and thriving. Let me show you a couple of more things. The top five personality traits that make up our learned charisma. Again, based on what Adam was just saying, here if you see, A for agreeableness. The fourth trait for charisma, 
okay, which corresponds to our ability to work with others. Working with others, maintaining the relationship is so hard, right? All you can just say is like, hey, get out of my life and, you know, you can break that relationship forever. But imagine maintaining a relationship and that too for years and decades, just like how our parents did with their friends. So communication can be the core to create trust and faith in the other person about us and our intentions and how to use your vocabulary to make a positive change in the world. What are the benefits of having difficult conversations? Usually, why do relationships break down? It is because there is a communication gap. We are not able to have difficult conversations uh, and because of which we just stall things until it's too late and relationships get broken. So, thank you so much. Bye.